What's up everybody? I'm back again today and I'm here to crush some cars today. It's going to be a non-stop crushing day, but I got something really cool I think I want to do if I get time here in a little bit. Until then though, I'm just going to start smashing some cars. I got to make some room out there. I got to clean it up in here a little bit. It's getting a little bit crowded in here. So I'm going to try to crush as many cars as I can. Just bought some cool stuff. Well, one cool thing anyway. Those other bicycles, I'll probably throw them on Facebook Marketplace for cheap and see if somebody wants to grab them real quick. But this is the main one I like. Old Buzz Bike Eliminator, made by Western Flyer. But check out the Ram Horn handlebars. You don't see those very often. They're a tiny bit bent, not bad. This one over here is bent in probably about a quarter inch, maybe half inch. I mean, it's still usable. It could probably be straightened pretty easy. It's got the old slick on the back of it still. Pretty interesting bike. I gave him a hundred bucks for everything. There's this old seat too. It's still in good condition. It's an old Viscount. So if I ever get back into eBay, that'll sell pretty good on eBay. So like I say, I'll probably throw those three bikes on Facebook for 25 bucks for all three of them or something like that. Bikes don't sell very good around here. Then he also had these in the back of his truck, four sheets of lead, about 60 pounds there. I gave him 25 bucks for them, and I'll turn around and I'll sell them for probably 50 bucks or so. Double my money real quick. I was getting ready to crush this truck, and I realized it has a 9-inch in it. For about one, maybe two years of this body style, they put 9-inch Fords under these trucks. And I didn't expect it to have that, so I set it aside for now. I haven't decided if I'm going to take it in there and cut it out or not yet. I'll have to figure that out here in a little bit. Then a big load of scrap came in. Bunch of radiator ends, old junk hubcaps. Doesn't look like there's anything really good in here. I'll probably just dump it out in the truck, in the dumpster, I mean. Although this here, this stand is kind of neat. The Mechanical Manufacturing Company, Chicago. It's got three legs on it. That'll go down to Texas. That ought to bring, you know, probably 30, 40 bucks. So I'll go ahead and hang on to that. All right, this is what we're gonna do next. I don't know how many of you guys have ever seen a limousine get crushed, but that's what we're gonna do next. Now, normally, what I've done in the past with these limousines is I just smash the roof in and I stick them up on top in the box because they fit right in the box, no problem. But that would be kind of boring. So I'm actually going to wad it up to where it'll actually fit in the crusher. And there's a little bit of a process to it. I've done it before on older limousines. I've never done it one on this done it on the one this new. But uh, I'm hoping it works. I guess we'll find out. I'm not sure if it doesn't work, then we'll have to figure something else out. And I may wind up having to just shove the roof in. But I think it'll work, and I think we can get it to fit in the crusher. The crusher is only 20 feet long inside, and it's exactly 20 feet. So if you have something that's 20 feet and one inch that won't crunch down any further, it won't fit and a lot of times if it's 20 feet long and you crush it in there 
it expands out and where the crusher slides down uh, stuff of the car or whatever will smush into there and then you can't get it back out of the crusher without fighting it. So I generally like things to be about 19 and a half feet long or shorter in order before I crush them in there. So this limousine here won't be an issue. The white one might be an issue so I'm probably not going to mess with the white one today. I'm just going to crush the black one. What I'm going to try to do is open up the back doors, smush the roof in right there at the front of the back door and then pick up the rear end of the car and fold it over on the front half of the car. Now the black one that, that'll make it plenty short enough I'm going to do a quick tour of the car again for those that didn't see it the last time. This in here is the older style of car. So it's not quite as high tech, it's still got the old tube style TV in it. There's the window that rolls up. It still has the glasses down there underneath it. All the fancy wood green interior. The guy could probably part it out, make some pretty good money. There's the sunroof. And there's all the switches that control everything. But I don't have time to mess with parting it out. So I'm just going to open up the doors, smash the roof in, and fold it over. Hopefully it cooperates. Alright, the first step is done. This car here has been not very cooperative so far. On the old limousines that I've done before were always old ones out of the 60s or 70s. And so they always folded up really easy because they were always super rusty and they weren't built as good as these are. This in here, I actually had to work pretty hard to get it to fold down a little bit like that. So I'm not sure what's going to happen now. What I'm going to try to do is circle the forks up above the rear end. That way I kind of got some torque to put on it and I can hopefully fold it on over. Now the frame of this car is what I'm kind of worried about. I'm worried it's going to be pretty stout. Those old ones, like I said, were pretty rusty, so they just folded easy. This in here may not cooperate quite as good. Okay, like I feared, it's not really cooperating, not really folding where I wanted it to fold. Nothing's really cooperating, but I think with this one at least, because it wasn't a very long limo to start with, that I can fit it in the crusher just like this. Now that back end is going to fold back down, like I was talking about a minute ago, and it's going to kind of bind up inside the crusher, so hopefully I can smash it in there good enough. But it smushed in there fairly good, like I said, not, not quite as good as I was hoping. It's probably because of this sunroof here. If that wouldn't have been there, I think it wouldn't have had quite as much support up here and it would have crushed in a little bit better like I wanted it to. But we'll go stick it in the crusher and we'll see what happens. I don't have much else going on today. This one still has the catalytic converters on it, but you can see where somebody cut them open, knocked all the guts out of them, then welded them back closed. And so they're not, they're, they're empty, they're worthless, so I'm not gonna bother pulling those off. I do have to straight, drain the fluids out of it and I have people ask me all the time how I do that and I don't ever film it much just because it's kind of boring and it takes forever I say it takes forever, it only takes a couple of minutes but it's not interesting like crushing a car is but what I do is I just hold it up in the air like this and I'll take the pick and swing it and knock a hole in the pans and I just drain it right into this tub here this is just an, uh, one of those 250 gallon tubs and I cut, up, cut it off about a foot and a half tall I just drain all the gas, oil and transmission fluid and that type of stuff into this bucket here. And then I just pick that up with the pallet forks 
and hold it over the top of this here and I got one of those big barrel funnels up on top and I just drain it into these tubs. And so that one there is full. The guy that gets the stuff from me, I just give it to a guy, he heats a shop with it. So it's a pretty good relationship. He hauls it off for free. And they used to pay for it, but anymore, there's, there's a lot of companies around that will just haul it off for free for the oil. Works pretty good, just drains in here like that. And yeah, this does get a little bit of water in it, but what you do if it rains a bunch overnight or something like that, is you just let it settle, don't touch it, and then you open up the valve, and because oil floats on water, the water will all stay at the bottom, and then the oil will stay at the top. So you can drain off, you know, however many gallons of water it collects overnight. And this will trickle for a minute. A lot of times this is when I take the time to edit a video or something like that. I want to get some actual racks built to set these up on. And I've tried various things over time, but nothing ever seems to work as good because the rack's always in the wrong spot and it's in the way and I can't get to the oil pan or that sort of stuff. So really the best I've found so far is just hold it in the air with a loader and swing a pick and knock a hole in it. Seems to work the best. And there's no way you can ever get all the oils out of a car. Like this transmission's got a torque converter up inside of there and that's going to have a little bit of fluid in it. It's going to have fluid in the brake lines. It's going to have a little bit of oil still inside the engine. I mean, there's just no physical possible way to get every ounce of fluid out of these cars. And so there's always little dribbles here and there on the ground, and that's where it comes back into raking the dirt up and taking it out and putting fresh dirt in, that sort of stuff. And every EPA guy I've ever dealt with understands that, and they've never been critical about little tiny dribbles on the ground. They don't care about that. What they're really looking for is the guys that are just dumping hundreds of gallons on the ground. That's all she wrote. And I think I'll be able to get that back out no problem. It did kind of crunch in there pretty tight. I know you guys enjoyed it when I crushed that Jaguar on its side. So just for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and flip this one up on its side and crush it on its side too. Because why not? How often do you get to see a limousine turn into a log? those who have ever wondered how they build a, a limousine frame all they really do is chop the frame you can see back there where they chopped it they chopped it there and then up here at the very front oh there it is I was gonna say there's no spice up there usually they chop it up closer to the front somewhere but they uh, chopped it right there and right back right there and they put this piece in the middle in then that right there and then they extend the drive shaft they put in a carrier bearing and they put in a second drive shaft and that's how they do it and then the floor you can see they just use some sort of rib sheet metal for the floor to give it support so it's not very high tech and you can see it already starting to rust compared to the factory car that's because when they build these limousines and hearses and stuff like that they don't do quite as good of rust prevention you can even see up there where it's rusting out there but not up there and they just don't 
code them as good or whatever it is. And so coach built cars usually rust out way faster than factory built cars. Enough talk, let's crush it. That didn't crush at all. Well, a tiny bit. So that didn't go quite exactly like I planned. It must be pretty stout built inside. It didn't hardly crush sideways at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it down again and try to rock it and see what happens. crushed a little bit flatter doing it that way. That rear end fought me and I forgot this rear wheel drive car, duh. Normally I only crush front wheel drive cars on their side. But even then it was still pretty stout. That frame would put up a fight. So it didn't crush as flat as that Jaguar did, but still, how often do you get to see a limousine in this form right here? There it is. It rolled back down on its bottom, kind of. When I pulled it out of the crusher, that's a mangled up log of a limousine. Kind of a shame on this one. All that was wrong with this truck here is you can see the, I think the lower ball joint popped out hit the ground tore the a-arm up so it needed all that rebuilt and it's pretty rusty but other than that there wasn't anything wrong with it, it still ran it still well it didn't drive anymore but the transmission was good even got a rally wheel on the front of it but just another junker That's that. Crushed on top of that poor S10. Kind of an ugly bundle. When I took it out of the crusher, the back end kind of folded back down, so I had a hard time getting back in the crusher, but I got it in there. That's why a lot of times, back when I used to buy a lot of farm equipment and big trucks and stuff like that, guys would bring me a, a truck and I'd measure it. I had a tape measure in the loader at all times. And for them to get full price, it had to be under 20 feet. And they'd argue with me and say, it's only a half inch over. I say it doesn't matter if it's a half inch. A half inch will not fit in the crusher. I can try to force it, but it's just extra work I have to do, so I ain't paying full price. And there it is, up on top, headed to its new home with the shredder. That one's next. Like I say, I'm not going to mess with it today. I don't have time to mess with it. It's middle of the day now. I've got to run some errands, go buy some catalytic converters from a guy, get something to eat, come back, get this trailer loaded real quick, and then i got to head out. So I took that in there, lifted it up. I was going to pull the wheels off and then drop the rear end out of it and I realized I left my bottles on the last time I ran the torch so they're empty so I can't do any cutting 
So now I got the choice of either letting the truck sit here until I have time to mess with it, which could be a long time, or just go ahead and crush it. But I'll see, I'll save it till last. That'll be the last vehicle I put in the dumpster. If something else comes in between now and then, I'll spare this and crush it instead. Check that car out. That's a pretty clean looking little car. I make a good crushing video. Here's one here. This guy hauled me a lot of junk with this truck. It finally broke down on him and he didn't feel like fixing it anymore. So he brought it out and sold it for scrap. He drove it without a windshield in it. He just wore goggles. Because it's legal to drive without a windshield, but you have to have goggles on. And the cab is just held to the frame with a ratchet strap, which I thought was pretty crazy, but it is what it is, just an old work truck, but it's gonna be a crush truck here in just a minute. This is one of those deals where this truck was exactly 20 feet long, so I had to kind of make the front bumper fit in there. So I'm hoping it doesn't bind up on me. Here's the wrecked Crown Vic. This one ran perfect. Ran and drove perfect, but totaled out in the rear end. Just junk. I don't have a clue what was up with this car. I didn't ask any questions. Most of the time I don't. I ask them if they got the title or proof of ownership, and beyond that, I don't really care. <laughs> got it loaded, ready to go. That truck was a little bit too wide to fit between the opening on the trailer. The trailer has those braces there at the back of the trailer, and they make it a little bit narrower at the very back than the rest of the trailer is, and it wouldn't quite fit. So I was finally able to ram it through there, but it took some work. And the truck and the Ranchero both survived, so those nine inches will live another day. If I get busy tomorrow and don't have time to get the torch going, then they'll get crushed tomorrow, but we'll see. And with that, I think I am done for the day. It is a hot one. I think it's about 106 degrees out here right now. So I'm pretty well cooked. I've gone through a gallon and a half of water and I'm still feeling a little bit dehydrated. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like I said before, it's not every day you get to see a limousine get crushed into a log. So it's hopefully something unusual for y'all. If you enjoyed it, please share it with somebody and then hit that like button too. Drop a comment, tell me what your favorite part was. All that sort of stuff helps the algorithm, helps this channel to grow. You guys have been doing great about that stuff already, and I really appreciate that. So that's that. I'm going to head out. I hope you guys have a good one. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.